everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're out at Furman Woods in Northamptonshire in the UK and we're going to be going out and taking pictures of mushrooms today. It's kind of partly uh, overcast, uh, expect a little rain, but that's a perfect weather for mushroom photography where we can actually control the light. And we don't usually get a lot of light through the forest floor anyway uh, with the canopy overhead. So let's get started. Okay. So what I have is I have this handheld light here, and I use this a lot for my macro photography. I've got a couple of these that I use. You can get them off of Amazon. They're really cheap, and I just get the small ones for this kind of stuff. Let's see if you can see that. You can adjust basically whether they're bright or dim or whatever you want to do with them. And you can also adjust the Kelvin of the light. So I can make it really warm or I can make it really cold. And so, and it's it's... Just really convenient to have one of these out in the field. So, all right, my camera's set up and I've got it down, upside down the tripod to get it as close as I can to where this mushroom's at. So, and I'm shifted over to manual focus. And so what I'll probably end up doing is doing like a focus stack and I might not use it as a focus stack, but I'm still gonna set it up. So when I hold the light down here, I can control the light. I can shift it around and get different effects with this uh, light. So what I'm gonna do here, so you can see this one, is I'm just going to set the light down right there. And you can see on the screen, if I can keep my fingers out of the way, kind of what it does for that mushroom. And then I'm just gonna shoot a stack right through it to try to get as much of it as I can and, and focus, so. Okay, I've got my camera on a tripod and I've got a timer set. And so what I've done is I'm focused on this piece of uh, lichen or moss right here on the front, and I'm gonna shoot my first exposure. I just push the button, if I push the right button. Yep, there goes the timer. So long exposures. And as I get done and I go through the next one, I'm gonna shift my focus slightly farther into the mushroom and then keep shooting through these exposures until I get everything in the mushroom kind of where I want it and then focus. And then what I'll do after this, when I take it back in and I'll show you later on, I'm gonna import this into Photoshop and I will go through and stack these so that it, um, will actually have everything in focus using fo using a focus stack technique. Okay, I just walked really from over there to over here and I found some what I think is called sulfur cap mushrooms these things here. Um, I know these, I believe these are poisonous, so I uh, just wanted to also make a point. I don't actually pick any of these and eat them because I'm not really familiar with mushrooms and which ones are safe and which ones aren't. But uh, I do like mushrooms, but I, I, I don't pick these out in the woods and eat them because there are some that are edible and some that will kill you. So I just don't know, so I avoid. So, um, so I'm gonna take some shots of these now. These sulfur caps have a little yellow in them, which will go really well with the warm light. I've shot quite a few of these before. They're really common. You'll find them anywhere really where there's fallen timber. So let's take some pictures of these. I'm gonna use kind of the same technique where I stick my tripod upside down, get my camera down as low as I can, and then move my light around to kind of get the effect I want. So, all right. Okay. Once again, I've got my camera mounted on the tripod upside down. I'm really targeting this top mushroom over here because it's the one that's actually in the best condition. Some of the other ones are kind of brown. I think they're starting to turn. So, um, so I've got the timer set. I'm using a 105 millimeter Nikon macro lens and I have the uh, aperture, oh, or you know, I got as high as I can get it so I can get the best depth of focus as I can for this picture. So, and I've got the timer set so I don't get any camera shake. And so I'm just gonna activate the shutter and then probably do like four images to shoot through this and then catch some of that leaf in the background that I stuck back there. So I had to clear a little bit of the vegetation away from the mushroom to be able to get a, you know, a clear field of view. Okay. 
Okay, over here I found this other fungi. I think it's called turkey tail. So, and I'm gonna take some shots of this. I, I know whenever you initially look at this, it doesn't really look that exciting, but um, I think with the moss and everything, it'll have a, you know, it'll make a good picture. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a try, and then we'll see. And as you can see, I'm holding the light here. See what it does for the color, and then versus when I put it back. I'm getting more contrast and casting shadows and stuff, so it's really, really a good uh, tool. All right. Now we're in Lightroom, and I've imported my mushroom pictures, this stack of six mushroom pictures that I've taken that I'm going to focus stack. So what we're going to do is, I, like I said, I've imported them into Lightroom. Then I'm going to stack them in Photoshop. And then we're going to use Luminar to do some finishing touches on the image. Now, as you can see on these images, they are upside down. That's a result of my camera being on the tripod upside down. But we'll actually correct this whenever we're doing our post-production. So what we do to take these into Photoshop... So we select all the images by clicking the bottom one, and then we hold down the shift key and click the top one, or vice versa. Now we right click on them, and we say edit in, and what we want to do, we don't want to edit just in Adobe Photoshop, we want to open as layers in Photoshop. And this is going to take a minute, and it's going to take all these pictures and insert them into their own layers inside of the Photoshop. Now what this does for us is, is we have a limited focus depth with our cameras. And what this does is help us overcome that. So we can actually get as much of the scene as we want in focus. So sometimes you want to have a little out of focus, some bokeh in the background, and that's okay. Other times you want to have everything in focus. And then, and with, especially with macro photography, your depth of focus becomes so short that focus stacking becomes a way to work around that limitation. Now, in this instance, I have brought all the pictures in, including the ones that I said I wasn't going to use. I didn't really mean to do that, but we're just going to go ahead and leave those in there. Whenever we go do our stack, it's just those. But what we need to do is we highlight all our images over here on the right-hand side under the layers. We select those. And so I told you I was going to flip these because they're upside down. I come under Image, and I go to Image Rotation and then I flip the canvas vertically. Now I've got everything right side up, the right direction. Now in this case though, I'm gonna, I've got all my, my images selected, all my layers over here on the right. I'm gonna come in and go edit and auto align layers under edit. And I'm gonna leave auto selected and I'm not gonna do vignette remo removal or geometric distortion. I'm just gonna leave it and just choose the default on auto and I'm gonna click that. Now, once I've done that, I'm going to come back in and go edit and auto blend layers. When I click this, I'm going to make sure I've got stack images selected and then seamless tones and colors and content where fill transparent areas both checked. And I click OK. And what ends up happening is it'll take these and stack them based on which images are in focus. Now, over here on the right, you can see where we've got the mass now lined up. We've got our image up here on the top that have been merged. And I'm just going to, before I go back and go back into Lightroom with this, I'm going to go under Layers, down to the bottom, and I'm going to flatten the image. Now, you don't have to do this, but it does make your image a little smaller and even a little bit more portable. But if you're going to do more work on it, I would probably save that off with, the, with your... Uh, layers exposed like that, but I'm not doing that. And then I just come back in here and I go close all and it asks me if I want to save this and I'm going to say yes. And this will save this back and take me back to Lightroom. And once we get back to Lightroom, it will create, you will see the saved image that comes back into Photoshop. And so there it is. We can tell it's the one because it's right side up and the others are upside down. If I click on that, and we look at it closely, we can see that we have got all of our mushrooms in focus. See, everything's in focus versus, let's grab this one over here. If I look at this, it's not all in focus. You can see that versus this nice sharp image that I have over here where everything is in focus.
So now what I'm going to do is I'm not going to do any more editing in here. You can with Lightroom, uh, but in this case, I'm going to use Luminar AI. So to get into Luminar AI, I've got this installed as a plugin. I just right click once again on this image that I've got here that I just got back from Photoshop and I say edit in and I go edit in Luminar AI. Whenever this comes open, I say edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. You don't have to do that, but that's just what I'm choosing because I want to edit it with what I've done in Lightroom. Okay, now we have our image open in Luminar AI. Now you can go directly into edit and edit this image, but I find in this particular, when I'm doing these uh, macros, I like to go into objects. Oh, perfect macro. Perfect macro is the one I like. There's only a few. It's not, it's not too drastic. If I turn this on and off, this is what we started with, and this is what perfect macro has brought us to. So I kind of like that. We can also come down here to the bottom and adjust this to either take out some of the effect. I mean, if I pull this all the way down and I go back and forth now, there's no change where if I bring it up halfway, I should see a little bit of change. See, I got a little bit going on here, but I'm going to go ahead and apply that whole preset to this scout and click on edit. My edit button's gone away up here for some reason, but that's okay. Now, once I come into the edit menu, I have these dots, one next to light, one next to structure. That is what, and then one down here with details, that is what has changed whenever I applied that preset back out in the templates. I can come in here and I can add some accenting. And this is what's gonna do here. I can either decrease the accenting or increase the accenting. And I think I'm gonna leave that if I turn this off, turn it on, come down to Composition AI. Now, I'm going to take it full advantage of the Luminar AI. I can click on Composition AI, and it will go ahead and crop my image down to what it thinks is a good solution. Now, whether you think it's a good solution, that's another story, but I think I might. Yeah. I think I'm going to stick with that. I like that. So I'm going to keep that the way it is. I've got my lights. I can add more warmth to it, but I've already got it pretty warm with how I did with my, my handheld lighting. Exposure, I'm pretty happy with that too. So I can add a little bit of more smart contrast. Now, whenever I'm adding contrast or I'm adding sharpness, I like to come in and actually zoom all the way in. That's too much there. Let's... Uh, bring that down into there. And so I like that. That looks pretty good. As I come down here, I've got my structure AI. Same thing here. I want to zoom in to see what this is doing, but I can add. So this is really handling like clarity, uh, contrast, and sharpness. And then we can put a little boost in there. Now, as you can see on the mushroom, there's stuff on it, right? We've got some spores. There's some other stuff that's fell down from the forest. Kind of like that, though. Gives a texture, so I'm going to leave that the way it sits. Add a little boost. Now, what I can do, because maybe I don't want this boost applying everywhere, so I'm going to apply a mask and do a paint mask. I'm going to add, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this down over here. I'm going to hit these foreground objects like so. And I'd probably be a little bit more careful, but I'm just doing this as a demonstration. So you can see here and, and that I've increased my, um, My contrast and everything here, so, so that looks good. Now I'm going to increase the vibrance just a hair. And I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to pull a little bit of the color cast out. I'm pretty happy with that. Now details. I can increase and sharpen and do all that kind of stuff. I think what I'm going to do is come in here. So once again, I'm messing with the 
sharpness and contrast, I'm going to increase that just a hair. Maybe put this up and bring that up just a bit. But I only want to apply this to here, to these mushrooms. So I'm going to use a paint mask, and I'm just going to paint this on over here these foreground items. Okay, so we've applied these details. We can scroll down. Now, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come all the way down now to professional, the professional options, and select dodge and burn. And I'm going to do this dark. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to Darken this area down over here. I'm going to make the brush size a lot bigger. I'm going to try this. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it or not, but we're going to try it. Okay, I think I do kind of like that. I think. So if I got too much in here, because like I darkened the wood over here, I'm not sure if I like that. I can erase that back off. And then bring that back over. So I don't want to apply it down there. So I do kind of like that. I think I'm going to leave that. Now, what we can do is there's two different ways we can actually look at what we've done before and what we've done after. This is our before. This is our after before, after. Um, some of you might not like that dodge and burn effect that I just did, but if you don't like it, don't do it. I can turn the dodge and burn. So this is without the dodge and burn, and this is with. So as you can see, there's that whole light area. I've just darkened that down. I do kind of like how that, whenever I kind of dulled that down in the back right there, so I'm just going to leave it. Um, now, once I'm done, I click Apply. And what happens now is it exports it back into Lightroom. And so as we come back into Lightroom, the image that we just did in Luminar AI is automatically added back into the Lightroom catalog. And then at this point, I can export it out with all my normal settings. That's my video for this week on mushroom photography. I hope you enjoyed that and uh, hope to see you again next week. And before I forget, don't forget to like and subscribe down below. That'll help me out a lot. I appreciate your time. Thanks. Take it easy. See you next time.